Good morning, boys and girls. Hope you're all doing well, getting your school stuff together. I think school's right around the corner. That's exciting. I'm excited for you. I know you've missed your friends and missed having somewhere to go. Home is a lot of fun until you have to be there all the time, right? So I'm excited for y'all to get to do that. Well, let's get started. Make sure you have your Bible and your uh, mail out, your Sunday school mail out. And if you have that ready, um, we're ready to get started. So before, while maybe, maybe while some of you are getting that together, I want to ask you a few questions. First question is, can you think of a time when you've done something wrong to some, somebody, somebody in your home, a friend? Think for just a second. Mm, boy, I can. I'm not proud of that. But I can certainly think of a time when I have made the wrong decision and I've hurt somebody, okay? Have you ever said something unkind or done something mean to maybe your best friend or your brother or your sister? What about this? Have you ever hurt your mom or your grandparents or your dad? Um, because you chose to misbehave. I bet every one of you, and I can too, remember a time when that happened, okay? So, how did they respond? How did that person that you wronged, how did they respond to you? Well, even when someone does something hurtful or wrong to us, we have a choice to make. We can try to get back at them, or we can choose to do what God would have us to do and forgive. Well, that's kind of the whole theme of today's story, okay? So we're going to learn about Joseph, again, part three of learning about Joseph, the hero of the Bible. And remember what a hero is? A hero is a person who is admired for their good deeds, the things they do, the, their actions, and the quality of who they are. And sometimes the hero's showing great courage. And, and I really feel that you're going to learn quickly how Joseph shows those two things. How he sh shows how he can be admired for the choices he made and you're gonna see where he did show that he had great courage. So, I'm ready to get started. Oh, can I tell you this? Forgot this part. You know, um, choosing to forgive someone when they do something wrong to you, let me tell you something. It's hard, and I, I feel like you know it's hard too. Did you know that all we have to do is ask God to help us to forgive? Yeah, it's as easy as that. Lord, I don't want to forgive. Lord, I know I need to, but I don't want to forgive. Will you help me, though? And he does. Why, why would Jesus want us to be forgivers? Hmm. Simple as this. Because he has forgiven us of so much, right? When Jesus died on a cross for our sins, He forgave a lot, a lot of the things that we've done wrong. Sin is choosing to do what I want to do instead of what God wants me to do. And we've been forgiven of a whole lot. And the Bible says that if we're going to receive that forgiveness, if we want that forgiveness, then we're going to need to show forgiveness too. And so that's why we can ask. And God helps us to make those right choices to forgive. It's not easy to forgive and forget, but God can help us do both. Okay? So I'm ready to do, sun, to do our Sunday school lesson, but you know that it's best if we start asking God to help us to be good listeners. So let's do that together, okay? Dear God, thank you for another day to open up your word, to study with my friends together. What a great topic that we get to talk about today, forgiveness. 
And what a great person, a hero of the Bible, that we can learn this great quality through Joseph. Lord, I pray that you give us good listening ears and a good listening heart. We really want to learn from this story today. We want to learn from your word. So Lord, help us to focus on you, to pay close attention, to not be distracted, to give you the time that you deserve. You're so good to us, Lord. I pray that we show you how much we love you by being a good listener and paying attention and wanting to do better. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, guys and gals, so let's, before we get into our story, let's review for just a second, okay? So the first uh, story we learned about Joseph, remember, he was a young boy, and he, uh, his, he has many brothers, right, 11 brothers, and his dad was Jacob, and Jacob loved all of his sons. Let's make sure that's clear. He loved all of his sons, but he had a favorite. And Joseph was his favorite. And how did he show Joseph that he was the favorite? Well, he, he gave him something special, and the other brothers didn't get that, right? So he gave Joseph a beautiful coat of beautiful colors. And we hear that story a lot, Joseph in the coat of many colors, okay? And so Joseph was very proud. Oh, he, he was. And one day he was sent out to check on his brothers and they're out taking care of the sheep and they saw him coming. They knew that he had already gotten that coat of many colors and they were a little bit jealous. We never got a coat of many colors from dad. We never got a special gift like that from dad. So jealousy was beginning to grow in their hearts and jealousy is not a good thing, is it? No, it's not. And it began to grow in, in their hearts. And the more it stayed in their hearts, the bigger it got. And it affected how they thought about Joseph. Well, guess what? God had a special plan for Joseph. And he allowed Joseph to have a couple of dreams. And in those dreams, it was as if it pointed to how Joseph's brothers would one day bow down to Joseph. Hmm. Well, Joseph thought it was kind of funny and kind of neat. Hey, what's this all about? So he runs and he tells his brothers about these dreams. He's kind of laughing it off. The brothers didn't think it was that funny. It made them mad. Oh, well, who does he think he is? He thinks he's some special guy? Well, God was allowing him to have these dreams to point to something that would happen in the future, and we're going to see that today, okay? So the brothers decided they would get back at Joseph. And so when they, he came out to visit them in the field, they said, oh, here he comes. We see that coat. Hmm, what could we do to Joseph? Oh, there's an old empty well, let's throw him down in there. And they threw him down in there. We're just gonna leave him there. They took that coat off and then they decided, hey, here comes a group of people. Let's, let's get them to take Joseph off. And that's exactly what happened. Well, Joseph wasn't gonna be around anymore. So they took his coat and they messed it up. And they took it back to their dad and said, something terrible has happened to Joseph. Of course, Jacob was very sad. So not only did they mistreat their brother, not only did they get rid of their brother and send him off to another land, they lied to their father. Ooh, these brothers are making one mistake after another, after another. And it kind of started with them being so jealous of Joseph, right? Okay, so Joseph goes off. And he's living in a new land now. And uh, somebody uh, picks him up and says, I want you to be my worker. You're going to work for me. And do you know that God was working in Joseph's heart? And they, uh, he began to work for Potiphar, a very important uh, uh, man of leadership and wealthy, very wealthy. And God allowed Joseph 
to be a hard worker. And even today, we like to see young boys and young girls and even women and men who are hard workers. We call that a, a, a strong work ethic. And that's a great thing. And I, I know that you are hard workers too. And, and don't ever be ashamed of that. That's very good. So Potiphar loves what um, Joseph is doing. He says, hey, you're a hard worker. I like having you around. I'm going to put you in charge of everything in my home. All the, all the helpers, you're in charge. Well, then someone told a lie about him. And it made Potiphar so mad, they threw him into jail. God never left Joseph. God was with Joseph every step of the way, even the hard times. So here's Joseph. He's a little bit bigger now, and he's in jail. And he worked hard to help the jailkeeper, the boss of the jail. He helped him. And he did such a great job. The jailkeeper said, Joseph, I can tell you, you're a special guy. I like the way you work hard. I'm going to put you in charge of all the prisoners. Make sure they get their water and their food and make sure everything's okay. And guess what? God worked through Joseph. It was all piecing kind of like a puzzle together. Each piece was very important. So Joseph met a couple of prisoners, one who had already worked for the king, and he said, what's wrong today? I see you're really sad. And the prisoner said, I had a terrible dream last night. I don't, I don't know what to think of this dream. Actually, two people had dreams. God allowed Joseph to have the ability to know what those dreams meant. God was with Joseph even in this. And one of the guys, he said, your dream means you get to go back and you'll be out of, here, out of jail. You get to go back and work for the king in just a couple of days. Hey, when you go back and work for the king, would you tell him about me? Don't forget me, okay? Please mention my name. Maybe, maybe I can get out sooner too. Well, the guy who got out of jail was so excited to be out that he, he forgot. He forgot about Joseph. Well, time went on just a little bit and the king woke up one morning after a terrible night's sleep. He had had some bad dreams and his dreams were terrible dreams and he was so disturbed. He was like, what, what could these dreams mean? What could they mean? And God allowed Joseph to tell him what they meant. Oh my goodness. That's where we're gonna pick up our story today. So, um, if you remember, let me tell you this before we get started. Uh, Joseph um, was called from jail. The, the guy who's back working for the king said, oh wait, I know somebody who can help you figure out your dreams. It's Joseph and, and he's still in jail. Could you get him out? And so they get him, the king gets him and says, tell me about my dreams. God was with Joseph and Joseph told the king about his dreams. And those dreams talked about seven years of no food and seven years of plenty of food. So the seven years of plenty of food came uh, first. And so Joseph told the king, you need to store up, store up, store up food because the day's coming when there won't be enough food for everyone. God gave Joseph that in his mind and in his heart. And so he shared it with the king. And the king said, oh my goodness, thank you so much. I am going to put you in charge of all of that. Would you take care of all of that? The finding the food, the storing the food, and then when times get hard, giving away the food to all the people so that people will have enough. Okay, sorry about that. Now we're ready. Get your Bibles. Here is my Bible. Its stories are true. God gave us these stories. They're for me and for you. Quiet, so quiet. We all now will be, listen, a story and pictures to see, okay? So today we're reading from the book of Genesis again, the very first book in the Bible. 
we're going to read through 40 uh, chapters, four, Genesis 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47. That's six chapters. So Miss Kim typed all that up in a simple to read story. So I want you to get your folders and let's read it together, okay? Hero of the Bible, Joseph, Genesis 42 through 47, part three. Here we go. Joseph was thankful to God for once again helping him to work hard and to help everyone have food to eat. God had blessed Joseph in telling the king what his dreams meant, that the land would have plenty of food for seven years and they would store up food because the people would go through a time when no food would grow. Only God would know that and provide a way to help the people and Joseph would be that helper. While Joseph was busy following God's plan to store up food, the land began to stop producing food. Many people were beginning to run out of food. Even where Joseph's father and the brothers lived, the crops were not growing either. Jacob, Joseph's father, learned that Egypt had food to buy. Hmm, see the plan coming together now? Jacob told his sons, go to Egypt and buy food for us. So, 10 of the sons left for Egypt. They went to the ruler who was selling the food. Stop, son. Who's that person selling the food? Hmm. The ruler looked very important. He was dressed like an Egyptian king. They did not realize this man was their younger brother, Joseph. What? Yes. You see how God worked that plan together? The same brother they mistreated and sent away with strangers so long ago. They didn't recognize Joseph, but he knew exactly who they were. He didn't want to tell them he what, who he was so soon, but he gave them food to take back to their families. Later, the brothers returned to buy more food. This time, Joseph told them who he was. Uh-oh. They were so afraid because they remembered how they had treated Joseph years before. The brothers had laughed at his dreams and his special coat. And in their anger, they made a bad decision that sent Joseph away. Stop sign. Not just one bad decision, several, right? Still, Joseph told them not to be afraid, that he would forgive them for being unkind. Okay, so here he is. Okay. That he would forgive them for being unkind. And this is what he said. You meant to harm me, but God meant it for good. Joseph hugged all of his brothers and gave them plenty, plenty, even extra food. Then he said, hurry home and bring back our father and your families. You can live with me in Egypt. Soon Joseph's family came to live in Egypt. They must have been so happy to be together as a family. God was with Joseph and took care of him all through the whole story. And then he was able to help his entire family. Isn't that awesome? Can't you just see now how God worked all of that out so that the family would have food to eat? And not one time did Joseph get angry with God for what was going on? Or did he get angry with his brothers? He loved them, didn't he? He loved them, and God was working inside Joseph's heart, growing that love. You know, Joseph knew God was with him. He knew it. He could tell. He knew that, that God was helping him interpret those dreams. He knew that God was helping him be a hard worker. 
God works all things. The Bible says God works all things for our good and His glory. That means God has good plans for us. Certainly, if we know Him as our Lord and Savior, God has a great plan for us. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Do you know that God uh, had a plan by sending Jesus? God rules. He knows all things. He takes care of all things. But then we messed up that plan, right? With sin, choosing to do what we want to do instead of what God wants us to do. And this X reminds us that uh, when you're in school and you uh, make a, a bad grade or you miss and you get it wrong, a, a test, a part of your test, you get an X on it. X is not a good thing, right? It's a mistake. It's, it's something we did wrong. Sin is certainly that, something we do wrong. But look what God did in Joseph's life. He turned things around to help Joseph and to point to, to God, right? And that's what he does with our sin. Watch this. We took that wrong, God took that wrong and made it a right. And how did he make it a right? By sending his son, Jesus, to die on a cross for us. And Jesus willingly gave his life. And all we have to do is say, God, I want that wonderful gift. I need your forgiveness. I want your forgiveness. So we have to receive it and believe all these great stories. We have to believe it. Even though we might not can understand it all, that's faith. Even if we can't explain it all, that comes in time. But we believe it. Okay? So let's go through God's gospel plan again. Ready? God rules. We sin. God provided. Jesus gives. We receive and believe. Let's do that again. Okay? Ready? God rules, crown. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Okay? God rules, we sin. God provided, sent Jesus. He willingly laid down his life. Okay, so he gives, we receive and believe. Good job. Let's pray and thank God for loving us so much that He sent His Son to forgive us of our sins and He helps us to forgive others. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, thank You so much for this great story. Oh, dear God, we see You work through this entire story of Joseph. Lord, You just thought of everything. Well, that's what You do. You always think of everything. Lord, You are good. You are amazing. You are marvelous. Lord, you think of everything and you do it for us too. Lord, I pray that you help us to remember this great story of this hero of the Bible, Joseph. Lord, I pray that you would help us to remember how sweet it is to forgive others. Joseph certainly forgave his brothers of a lot. Lord, we can forgive too. Thank you for allowing us to just ask you to help us. Lord, please help us to forgive others. Lord, I pray for these friends who've heard this story today, that it will be planted deep in their hearts and their minds. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Get your uh, folders or get your little pamphlet out, and let's do our songs together. Now, I've left these two songs, the whole Joseph story, because they're so great. And I wanted you to remember them so well. And that's how you learn things, going over and over and over them. Okay? So, let's go over the first one. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 verse 9. Okay? Let's sing it together. Sounds like... Got it? Okay. The Lord is with you wherever you go, wherever you go, wherever you go. The Lord is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 verse 9. Got it? <clears throat> I hope you're practicing these songs. They're so fun. All right. Let's look at the other one. Be kind and forgiving to one another. 
Did you see that in our story today? Did you see both of these verses in the story today? God was with Joseph wherever he went and how Joseph was kind and forgiving to his brothers. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, ready? Be kind and forgiving. Ready? Be kind and forgiving. Be kind and forgiving. Be kind and forgiving to one another. Ephesians 4, verse 32. All right, you've got 10 questions to answer. Hope you were a good listener. So, but let's look at the one on the side. What did Joseph share with his brothers? Did he give them some sheep? Hmm. Did he give them a fishing boat? Did he give up, did he give them stored up food? Hmm. Oh, I know, do you? All right, good job, circle that correct answer, okay? Who can tell me the three heroes of the Bible we have studied so far? Do you know them? Noah, Abraham, and Joseph, good. I'll ask you again next time, okay? All right, it's time for our Lunch Bunch winner. Peyton was our last week's Lunch Bunch winner, and today is going to be, ah, I got two in my hand. Okay, oh, I got two in my hand. Here we go. Mary Emily Frazier, how fun. Well, Mary Emily, you say you would like a nibbler meal from Zaxby's, and you're gonna get just that. So I'll be calling your daddy and your mama and to find out when is the best time to deliver your nibbler meal. This is so exciting. I mean, I'm excited that you got to, to do that. Boys and girls, this Sunday we get to have Children's Church again and we'll have our nursery open and it's not long before we'll be back for Sunday school. Now the things that you do, bring them back, show Miss Kim and let me reward your hard work with some Bible books because the first Sunday we're back together, we have Bible Bucks store. So I hope you're working hard on your, your mail outs because um, I'm excited to see those, to see what you're doing. Y'all have a great week. Be helpers for mama and daddy and grandmamas and granddaddies and get your school stuff all together and get your mind ready to do hard work, to be a hard worker at school. Bye now. <laughs>